I was preparing to do some research about SD-WAN today for a podcast coming up, and it struck me that actually SD-WAN is simpler in terms of bandwidth, that is the WAN t- tail circuits, than you might think. Maybe it's half the work. So here's the thing. I did a diagram where I th- as I was thinking about this, and it's here. Uh, And it talks about the private WAN today. Now, what you have is your branch here at point one, and where the branch actually connects to some tail circuits, some private MPLS bandwidth, and then it goes down towards your private cloud over a private WAN, usually an MPLS service, to the private cloud. There's two lots of bandwidth there that you have to buy and manage individually. And then the private cloud, uh, there's your application there connected to the private cloud, some sort of security function. And that security function is increasingly being used by people in branches to access services in the public cloud or to access SaaS. So that is Office 365, you've got your email is often hosted, you're often talking to services in the public cloud now where you rent, outsource your accounting and so forth. And increasingly what we're actually seeing, so that's three because your internet connection is still needed for that, even if it's just for internal email. So one, two, three, in bandwidth. but there's also increasingly a fourth bandwidth coming out here where quite often we're doing local breakout. So you're putting a security function in the branch, you've got an internet connection there and you're actually allowing that out. Now, today, most people are just doing straight out, you know, simple firewall, NAT out, and it's done. But increasingly, the obligations are to make that security function enhanced. You need to log and so forth, people with uh, deep obligations. Now, if you think about it when you do an SD-WAN, something looks a little different, right? So have a look at this. If you've got a pure public WAN-based SD-WAN, when I say public WAN, I mean the internet, because the internet is a public WAN, then the branch only has one set of bandwidth. Usually it'll be two or more providers, but it's still only one set of bandwidth to the public WAN, and you might be talking to SaaS or to the public cloud. And then you've got your overlay network talking down to your private cloud. That's your SD-WAN setting up here. And there's your application in the private cloud. This is actually a lot simpler than the previous one, I think because now everything's got a single point of control. Now, when you think about the security function, and I've got another diagram here, what actually we're seeing the SD-WAN providers do, and the people who make SD-WANs, are actually implementing the security into their SD-WAN appliances. So they're now able to provide various ways, and there's different ways of doing it. Some of them do it on appliance. Some of them implement complex, some implement simple. So, but what they're doing is extending the security function into the SD-WAN appliance. So this is actually quite a bit simpler than the private WAN networks of today. And I hadn't actually sort of thought about that. Sometimes these ideas don't come into your head until you sit down and map them all out. Now, what are the security functions that the SD-WAN providers are putting in? Well, the big one is, of course, because they're doing application routing, this idea of load balancing apps across multiple bandwidth, not just packet flows, they can actually recognize traffic that's going to Office 365 or to SaaS. So they have the deep packet inspection. So you can say traffic going to Facebook, send it in to be logged. Uh, Traffic going to... Uh, a Dropbox, well, don't scan that. There's no point. And you can then actually send it into some sort of security function. And some people are providing the security functions in the SD-WAN appliance. So you run an NFE, you put it in. Some people are using cloud-based services. So you forward off the traffic into the cloud to be scanned by a company who has a cloud scanning service. Other people are diverting it back to the head office to put it into their scanning function down into the legacy. All of those work. But the trick here is that you actually have more control than you ever have before, and it's actually possibly simpler than it was before. I'm Greg Farrow from Packet Pushes. Thanks for listening. I hope you get some feed, something out of that. Um, if you want more, subscribe. And uh, if you want more podcasts where we talk a lot more about this in detail, head over to packetpushes.net. <laughs>